and the dollar going up suggests a flight to safety. And that is a downward force on inflation. We think that we're in a period of innovation that was the dream in the late 90s. Well, I don't think Michael Burry agrees with you. Kathy Wood is a celebrity investor best known for investing in high growth technology stocks like Tesla, Teladoc, and Zoom. And she is extremely bullish on the future of these kinds of companies. But while her ARK Invest Fund was the highest performing ETF of 2020, it underperformed just passive S&P 500 ETFs in 2021. And it has gotten even worse in recent months with many of her stocks dropping over 50% since November. But while Kathy Wood remains positive that her stocks are going to turn around and inflation will subside, there's a another just as famous investor who disagrees. And let me tell you, there's more tea here than a London cafe. Michael Burry has correctly called every last major stock market crash, including the recent dip we've seen in high growth tech stocks, with some companies declining by 30, 40, or even 50% over the last three months. Burry correctly called the dot-com bubble of the early 2000s. He famously predicted the subprime mortgage crisis that kickstarted the Great Recession. In fact, they even made a movie about him. So in this video, we're going to look at Michael Burry's thoughts on what's going on in the market right now, as well as look at some of his more recent predictions and how well those have panned out. We'll also compare those predictions to Kathy Wood's predictions and show why from Michael Burry's perspective, investors like Wood involved in high growth tech stocks should be terrified, and whether or not the same should be true for investors like you and me. So hit the like button if you want, and let's start by talking about some of Burry's more recent predictions. So everyone knows Michael Burry from his prediction of the recession in 2008 that was kickstarted by the subprime mortgage crisis crisis on Wall Street. But many may not be aware that Burry's involvement in some other high-profile investing events really shaped the last half decade. At the end of 2020, GameStop took off in price as retail investors piled into the heavily shorted stock with the goal of causing short squeezes and taking money away from big institutional investors and hedge funds on Wall Street. But this surge was kickstarted, at least in part, by Michael Burry betting on the company way back in 2019. He wrote several letters to the company's leadership that year about the company's then waste potential and opened a sizable position with them. Ultimately, Burry personally profited around $100 million from his investment in GameStop, though he sold well before the stock hit its all-time high at nearly five times his own exit point. So right call, but his timing could have been better if he had a crystal ball. But that position pales when compared to his next big bet. Later in December 2020, he revealed a bet against Tesla worth $534 million, betting that the stock would drop in value. The car manufacturer has long been one of Kathy Wood's favorite companies, and it still sits as the largest position in her ARK fund, at over $1 billion as I am filming this video. Burry said he bought the puts because Tesla was overvalued and relied too much on government regulatory credits for profitability. But as Tesla's stock price continued to soar, he issued warning after warning, saying in January, well, my last big short got bigger and bigger and bigger too, comparing Tesla's seemingly unstoppable surge upwards to housing in the 2000s. But with Tesla's price still marching upward, Burry increased his position to 800,000 put options against Tesla in March, then 1.1 million by June 30th of 2021. And in November 2021, he tweeted, can Tesla fall 80, 90%? After 2000, many high flyers did. And after Tesla CEO Elon Musk asked Twitter if he should sell 10% of his Tesla shares to generate taxes, Burry called the CEO out, saying Musk wasn't being altruistic and he just wanted an excuse to sell some shares, noting that Musk had 88 million shares pledged as collateral against a loan and he might be selling to cover personal debts. Musk fired back at Burry, calling him a broken clock referring to the saying that a broken clock is right two times a day. After which, Burry deleted his Twitter account and has not responded directly since. But that's not really a new thing. Michael Burry deletes his Twitter more often than Shane Dawson quits YouTube. And in this whole Tesla debate, Kathy Wood weighed in, dismissing Musk selling his shares solely as a way for him to pay more taxes. And her ARK Invest Fund maintains a future price target of $3,000 for Tesla, more than three times what it is trading at today. But while Wood's words seem very bullish on Tesla, her actions speak slightly differently, with the investor selling nearly 70% of her Tesla holdings over the past few months, and only recently buying back a few shares during Tesla's recent dip. But while Burry may have legitimate gripes with Tesla, so far his bet hasn't turned out too well. While Tesla in the last few months has dipped in price amid a larger sell-off in tech and growth stocks, Burry said back in October that he was no longer short Tesla, meaning his bet didn't benefit from the most recent drop. 
So while he may have started a short position since then, he also might have lost a lot of money on his bet against this company as it rose throughout 2021. Though Burry himself claims it was just a short-term trade and not a bet against the whole company. So while nothing too huge came of Burry's bet against Tesla, it did signal the start of him going head-to-head -head against Kathy Wood, as he was shorting her favorite company at the time. In fact, his fund, Scion Asset Management, also held puts against Kathy Wood's ARK Innovation ETF. And while Burry has also revealed he exited that bearish position last year, he said he thought the fund would continue to decline. And so far in 2022, he seems to have been right about that. But Burry hasn't restricted his criticisms to stocks, and he's made some even bigger predictions about what's coming in the future. He's gone ahead and called out Bitcoin and Dogecoin as well, warning assets are being driven by a speculative fervor. He called Dogecoin a Doge's breakfast and Bitcoin a speculative bubble. But while Bitcoin is down around 35% from when Burry tweeted that, Dogecoin is currently 165% higher than when he started criticizing it, though it has declined dramatically from its all-time high. So once again, Burry may have been early with his criticism and underestimated how much money would flow into these assets. Which leads us to Burry's latest big bet of recent months. In June, he proclaimed we were in the greatest speculative bubble of all time in all things by two orders of magnitude. And in Q3 of 2021, he ended up selling most of his holdings, dropping his active investments from $140 million to $42 million in the market. And part of his reasoning for this is his prediction of coming inflation, something he's been warning about since April 2020 when lockdowns first started, noting Warren Buffett saying that inflation generally hurts companies and their stocks. But guess who made the exact opposite bet of Burry? Well, the same person he's been betting against this whole time, Kathy Wood. While Burry was sounding the alarm of inflation for the past two years, Jerome Powell of the Federal Reserve at the time insisted inflation was transitory, and Kathy Wood went one step further, saying we would soon see deflation, where prices actually get lower every subsequent year. Her claim was backed up by the deflationary effect of technology, where technology tends to push down prices over time. Think of buying a laptop. Every year they get more and more powerful and the price for last year's model drops. And with new technologies such as AI and automation coming out, they would act to lower prices across all industries, with each technology's S-curve feeding into the next one, basically causing an avalanche of ever-improving productivity that would push prices down. And while that seems like a reasonable take, her prediction so far hasn't really panned out so well. While Fed Chairman Jerome Powell disagreed with Michael Burry at first, saying inflation would just be temporary due to supply chain bottlenecks, he changed his tone in late 2021. At the end of last year and the start of this year, we started to see the Fed change its stance on inflation, saying it was no longer transitory and would likely stick around for a while. And we saw this in the CPI data, or Consumer Price Index, which showed that inflation was up 6.2%. And this seems to match what a lot of people are seeing anecdotally, with rising prices for all kinds of goods all around us. And since we know that in an inflationary environment, growth stocks tend to get hurt more than say value stocks, that's just a rule of thumb, Kathy Wood's bet is costing her big right now. So at least on the inflation prediction, Burry seems to have been more correct than Wood so far. But let's also take a look at some of Wood's other predictions that clash with Burry's, because there's more drama here than an episode of 90 Day Fiance. Obviously, Wood has a very different take on Tesla than Burry. In fact, Burry advised Musk to issue more Tesla shares at the end of 2020 to take advantage of what he saw as a ridiculous price. Kathy Wood instead thinks Tesla is being undervalued based on its ability to disrupt all of automotive as well as several other industries with what she calls a consumer preference shift toward electric vehicles. As evidenced by overall car sales falling while EV sales are up over 100% annually. But at the same time, Kathy believes EVs will essentially become commodities by 2026, which means Tesla's real potential is in their batteries, their chip making abilities, and their autonomous driving technology, all of which have a much greater long-term potential considering Tesla's huge lead even over other EV companies like Rivian or Lucid Motors who really aren't even trying to compete in these spaces. At least they have pretty ads. Wood also has a very different opinion of growth stocks. While Burry says growth and software as a service companies represent a bubble in values, Wood believes these are undervalued innovation stocks that will continue to produce new world-changing technologies. The innovation that has been evolving and was accelerated coming out of the coronavirus 
prices is unstoppable. And in her opinion, their high price now actually underestimates the value they will create in the long term. But so far this year, the market has tended to agree more with Burry, with many of Wood's largest growth positions such as Zoom down 40% since November, or Teladoc down over 50% in that same time period. Meanwhile, Burry had shifted largely to cash, meaning he's likely missed the worst of that dip. The last area Wood disagrees with Burry on is cryptocurrencies. And while she isn't out here going all in on the doge, she has been a big supporter of Bitcoin, saying as recently as a few days ago on the investing app Public that she has a high conviction in both Bitcoin and Ethereum. And if you want to see these kinds of discussions, I do have an affiliate link to public in the description that will also get you two free stocks when you sign up. Wood thinks Bitcoin is the most profound application of public blockchains, the foundation of self-sovereign digital money. And Burry has called Bitcoin an asset that is being driven by speculation. Wood in turn thinks Burry does not understand the fundamentals that are creating explosive growth and investment opportunities in the innovation space. So clearly these two have a lot of disagreements and we could keep going over more of them, but let's instead take a look at what we can learn from the predictions of each of these two investors. So Michael Burry has obviously made some good calls. In fact, he's pretty much called every last major market downturn. The problem is he's also called many downturns that never happened. The broader stock market, while it is down around 10% currently, is only back to where it was five months ago when Burry first started calling for a crash. And way back in September, 2019, Burry talked about how index funds were overvalued and the S&P 500 has more than doubled since then. This is partly why Elon Musk has called him a broken clock. If you're always calling for a crash, eventually you're gonna be right. And similarly, Kathy Wood has made some great predictions. She ran the most successful ETF of 2020, taking a big bet on Tesla that paid off hugely, despite most people saying the run would have to stop soon. At the same time, she's so far been wrong about deflation coming rather than inflation. And her fund lost money in 2021, despite the fact that all she had to do was put money in the S&P 500 and she would have made a 25% return during that same time. I think this comparison shows that trying to invest by following a celebrity investor in general is not that reliable. No one is right 100% of the time and we only know who was right after it's already too late to invest. Although I will say that one point in Burry's favor is his seeming willingness to quickly change his mind. He did after all exit his short position in Tesla and stop tweeting at Elon Musk, though that may have just been a temporary trade. He also put a lot of money into GameStop and kickstarted the flood of retail investors entering that stock, but he later turned against that movement when he thought it got out of hand, calling it unnatural, insane, and dangerous. And while this might be called flip-flopping by some, I think it shows a willingness to change his mind when the information changes, which is essential to a good investor. Meanwhile, Kathy Wood has remained pretty staunch in most of her beliefs, still beating that deflation drum as recently as last month though she has also been willing to admit that they were wrong about short-term inflation being transitory. I think we'll still see in the long run if she ends up being right, or if she doesn't end up being right, if she's willing to quickly pivot when she realizes that she's made a mistake. So what am I doing based on the back and forth between these investors? Well, let me tell you, it's been a lot of fun watching these big investors duke it out and make these big, bold predictions. It's crazy that we live in a world where a guy who predicted the housing bubble is getting into Twitter arguments with Elon Musk. It's just straight up entertaining. And I'm guessing that Kathy Wood is going to continue investing in her innovation stocks despite Burry's warnings. If she's right, she'll make a killing. And if she's wrong, Burry can be satisfied that he was right once again. That being said, there is no way that I'm basing my investments on what any of these investors are saying. Sometimes I might agree with them, but that isn't because they said it. It's because I believe in what the fundamentals of the market are saying. I'm all for keeping investing interesting, but not so interesting that we lose track of our primary goal, which is to make money. But hey, speaking of making money, make sure to grab your two free stocks from public worth all the way up to $3,300 using the link in the description. It's literally free money. I used someone else's link to get free stocks myself when I first signed up. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.